We looked at a couple examples of how to construct a prefix code for a given set of lengths, granted that those lengths satisfy the craft inequality. And so let's briefly recap what we did in the procedure. So first we labeled the X's in our source alphabet so that the corresponding lengths were in increasing order or non-decreasing order more precisely. And that is an important step. If you do not do that, this procedure might not work not guaranteed to work and then let's jump down here so then we took the numbers 1 over 2 to the LK or more, more generally it's going to be 1 over B to the LK and we added them up we looked at the we, we stacked up these boxes and we looked at the number in binary expansion of the boundaries of between these boxes the bottom part of each of them and we took those binary expansions to LK places for the, the Kth guy, and that was our code word. So here, this was, maybe I'll write here, so this was the sum, uh, or maybe I'll just say 1 over 2 to the L1 plus 1 over 2 to the L2 up to 1 over 2 to the LK minus 1. That's what this was here in this column. And this column... It was minus one because right here, you know, here we we started it at zero. This was one, and then we added l. We, we added one over two to the l one. So when k is one, this would just be zero. And then for 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 three, we added one over two to the l two, and so on and so forth. And then this column, of course, was just the binary expansion of this guy to l k places, and this was our this was our code word. C of X K. Okay. Now, why does this always give us a prefix code? Why does this procedure always work? Well, here is the key fact. Here's the, the key fact. And it is the following. Say we have two strings. Let's say, let's focus on binary strings for the moment. Alpha 1 to J and beta 1 to M. So this one is a prefix of the other beta 1 to beta m if and only if beta 1 to beta m the, the binary number for that falls in a certain interval corresponding to this guy so if and only if put it here this binary number is less or equal to this if 0. Point alpha 1 up to alpha j is less or equal to point beta 1 up to beta m is less than point alpha 1 up to alpha j plus 1 over 2 to the j. j is the jth place here. So it's the, the number of, of characters or symbols in this string. And these here, I'm assuming these are binary strings. If they were not binary, then we would use b here instead of 2. And so in other words, i.e., this is this is true if and only if. Just another way of writing that. If this number falls in the interval, alpha 1 to alpha j to, to this, alpha 1 to alpha j plus 1 over 2 to the j. Open. This is strictly here. This is less or equal to here. So for example, let's look at an, an example. So EG, EG, 0, 1, 0 is a prefix of 0, 1, 0, 1, say. That's a prefix of that, clearly. And so according to, to this, this, this should be, so we should have 0 0.01 less or equal to 0, 1, 0, 1, less or equal to 0, 1, 0, plus 1 over 2 to the 3, which is, of course, 0 0.001, so this is just 1, 1. Okay, and that's fairly clear. If you're familiar with binary expansions, that's fairly obvious. And if you think about this, th what I'm saying here, um, it's, fairly, it's fairly obvious once you're familiar with binary expansions.
So maybe to, to see why this is true, if you don't see it right now, you need to think a little bit about just just sort of play around with, with these binary expansions and and sort of sort of get a feel for what how they work and what they what they do. Okay, so let's look at what this maybe this particular one in our in our little example here. So what would it mean? So is zero one zero that would be this part alphas to the alphas is a prefix of some other string if that other string falls in the interval for this guy. So what is what is this interval? So here we have 0, 1, 0 here. And what is the interval for this guy? So suppose that he were a prefix of some other some other code word, some other string. Well, his interval is the interval from 0 0.010 this up to 0 0.011. And that's right here. Fortunately enough, maybe that's not a coincidence. So this is the interval. The interval for this guy is right here. Hmm, is that a suspicious coincidence? Well, in general, our procedure was that we took this guy, and then what did we add to get to the next step? Well, we added 1 8, and why did we add 1 8? Because this was, so here, so we, we started out here, this was... These were the things that we were adding up. The first one was 1 over 2 to the L1. L1 was 2, right? So we added 1 over 2 to the L1. Here we added 1 over 2 to the L2, and so on, dot, dot, dot. So we added 1 over 2 to the L2. And what was L2? L2 was 3. So 3, right? So back down here to this thing. What we added was 1 over 2 to the L3. So in this case, J would be L3. And L3, so J here in the statement of this fact, is the number of symbols in this string alpha. This is our, our alpha here. And 3, L, or rather, rather L, uh, L2, sorry, did I say L3 before? L2, which equals 3, is exactly the length of this code word we we that was by design by design we made this have length 3 so it will always be the case that the interval that that this 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 code word or any given code word is a prefix of another string or another code word if the number for that string or code word falls in the interval the the box the, the interval that starts with that guy, that code word, and goes up to the next one. But that can never happen for any of the other code words. It's geometrically obvious that 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 the only uh, the the only code word having a number that lies in this interval, since this is a closed end and this is an open end, this does not include this number right here. This does not include three eighths. This is the only one that lies in that interval. And so it's, it's, it's clear once you sort of see the picture here and once you understand that fact that, that, uh, any given, that none of these code words is going to be a prefix of any of the others because none of the others lies in, it, in its interval. Maybe I'll do one other just to drive the point home if it's not completely clear. So, so let's look at this one here. This was one over L two, three, four, five. So this is this is one over two to the L five, and L five was oh this is five. L five was four. This is one over two to the four, one over sixteen. And so I would like to say that that this interval here is equal to maybe oops oh sorry I hit the scroll so I want to I want to figure out what this interval is so I need to I need to take that number and I need to add 1 over 2 to the J and what is 1 over what or what is J in this case well J is the length so we're, we're at this guy here J would be 4 in this case because we have four symbols in our string in order for this not to be a prefix or, or the, the rather the interval for which that that contains the things for which this is a prefix is going to be 
going to be 0 0.1010, 0 0.1010 plus 1 over 2 to the 4. And I would like to say that this is the same as this interval here. And is it? Well, we, we just need 4 to be equal to L5. And it is. 4 is equal to L5. So indeed, this is the interval, and this is the only guy in that interval. And it's obvious that whenever we do that, that it's always going to work, because the length of that interval is, you know, it's, it's 1 over 2 to the LK, and by construction, the length of that code word is always LK. Okay. So that's why it always gives you a prefix code. And let me mention just very briefly, I, I'm not going to go through the details, but so everything, uh, these examples I've been doing all in the case of B equals two, I'm taking the, just the binary case here. But for, for the general case, you would want to replace two by an arbitrary positive integer B. And you know, when you, when you do all of this stuff, you would have to replace all the appropriate twos, you know, twos in all the appropriate places by by b's, and you would be doing b area expansions instead of binary expansions. So you'd have to generalize in the appropriate way. And one last point to mention is that here I've been using the, for our alphabet, right? So here, you know, in in, um, uh, in general, you might want to construct a code where the code alphabet, you know, your code alphabet is some set other than, you know, here we've been just taking it to be like zero and one, or more generally for a B area expansion, you would have, you know, up to B minus one. So that all of this, you know, this representation in terms of B area expansions all works. But, in, you know, you might have some other code alphabet that you want to use instead of zero, zero uh, to B minus one, in which case, you know, once you, once you get your, once you do this construction and you get your code words, then you obviously just map the, the symbols to the, the appropriate symbols in whatever your desired code alphabet is.